Hi Benita, this is Desiree. Okay, so what I did here, I used the program Inspiration um, to be able to try and diagram your paper for you. I know that one of the things that, uh, one of the pieces of feedback that Mary gave you was that it need, you needed to be able to draw connections between these different pieces. So I think that more than just revising your trustworthiness section, you need to go out, go through and kind of make sure that things lead to each other. So for example, in the beginning part, you talk about that you're looking at employees' perspectives on organizational mandates. Um, you talk about that there's some accountability to accreditation, Head Start, Young Star, and NAEYC. Though you don't specifically then lead over into what are their perspectives on different aspects of this. Just you keep it pretty broad. So. Um, you don't talk here about what the educational background of the employees is already, you know, how many of them already have a degree, how many credits they are shy of the requirements that they need. And you don't talk about what their economic context is, whether this is going to be something that's an insurmountable economic goal for them. But that would be important, I think, to know. Um, then when you talk about your gap analysis, there are some issues that seem more minor, like labeling centers, but there are some issues that are more major. Hiring issues, i.e. a lead teacher and an assistant in the classroom, you don't talk about whether tender care has that right now. I mean, or to the extent how far they are away or what kind of hiring is going to be involved. But this seems to be the one that is most of interest to you. So if that's the case, then you need to say that to your reader so that where you're drawing a line then is basically here um, and you start to see that there's like a, a line of, well that's a bad color, but let's see, I'll make it a different color so we can see it, um, pink. All right, so that we've got employees' perspectives on organizational mandates with a particular focus on this accountability to accreditation that requires teachers be enrolled in coursework toward their degree. So then we can really talk as we go through about what's going to be involved there. Okay, so they might have, you might want to get at attitudes toward learning as you talk about in your context of literature. Do they find joy in learning? What do they believe about learning? What are their approaches to learning? Um, what are meaningful professional development initiatives? Um, that that might provide, uh, they might involve recognition and organization from organization and peers, some differences between individual and organizational work priorities, and offer a constructive philosophy of teaching. The trick, however, with this whole section, Benita, is that if you're talking about accountability to accreditation that requires that they be enrolled in coursework toward the degree, then what this really means is characteristics of the degree granting program. Does it provide this, this, and this? Right now in your method, you don't have a plan to analyze, for example, programs that are available at the technical college and have students have your interviewees say, I, I feel like I could go to this program. And then you could talk about whether or not they do offer a constructivist philosophy or connect to these different things. But this is more, this section that you've chosen to talk about more, seems to be more about professional development initiatives that might be provided by young by tender care, um, but since there's this this uh, coursework toward degree issue, I'm not sure that you've made the connection here. Certainly, I think their attitudes toward learning are something that we're going to want to see in the interviews, but we don't really see that in these questions as you've written them so far. So the the last is um, talking about this incentives and motivation methods. So this is where you're talking about what the institution of young of uh, tender care can provide. Can it say, okay, well, if you get your degree, we can provide you flexibility in your job design. I'm not entirely sure what Bransford has to say or why you've included him here. So I'd actually include uh, suggest that you take him out. Um, company approval certainly, if you can make clear that their um, what their beliefs are <coughs> about the company's approval if they do this coursework. Do you see the line I'm trying to draw here? Um, you might also say that there might be more responsibility or authority. For example, if they get their coursework toward degree, then they can be a lead teacher. If not, then they can only be an assistant teacher or something like that. And similarly with enhancing employee skills. So then we go over here to your method. 
I don't believe, unless I'm mistaken, are you still the lead teacher who would be keeping the journal? And if so, what are the things you need to be more specific about how the things that you're describing here would connect both to this literature stuff that you've talked about, for example, noting examples uh, evidenced by the teachers of joy of learning or times when they're talking about their beliefs about learning. You need to talk about how those things would be connected here as well as pointing toward these issues possibly. Um, in the interviews, you again want to say, is there anything here that is not talked about here. If so, it doesn't belong here or it needs literature, but there need to be connections. And if there are things in the literature that you're not getting at in your method, then you take it out of the literature. These all have to be tightly connected with each other. The other thing that I thought about is that you're not talking to anybody who's in charge at tender care. Um, you know, who's the big boss and maybe who's their boss. Um, and then that, that way you can talk about like what's their perspective on these incentives and motivation methods? What do they feel is reasonable as far as professional development and so on? So that seems to be another piece that's missing. And then we can talk about whether these are ethical, whether they are trustworthy, because basically all you've talked about at this point is that they're not having to do anything beyond their regular uh, work responsibilities, which isn't entirely true if they're sitting down for an interview with you. So. Um, you need to kind of, that's I think the next step. It's not, uh, you, it's the throughout you need to be able to, to tell this thread so that somebody who comes away having read this can say, oh, well she was interested in this and then this and then this and this um, and then she looked at these things and let's say the lead teacher uh, is maybe going to be connected here to the lead teacher journal and it's going to be around attitude towards learning. But you need to make that connection because so far I think the feedback you were getting from Mary and Gina um, is that your method doesn't seem to be very connected at, at the question level or at the what I'm looking for in the journal level with these pieces that are over here in the literature and with these pieces here. So that's your job next. Um, I'm happy to talk to you more about it if you need.